One day, while living in a tiny apartment in a big city of Colorado, we sat down and penciled out our dream life. What would it look like? What would we spend our time doing? Where would we live? We imagined a simpler life in the mountains, owning enough land outright to build a modest home, have a robust garden, and have a view that would never get old. We'd learn traditional skills like making lumber, timber framing, growing and foraging for amazing food, and we'd start our family. We'd tackle challenging projects, take risks, and be willing to fail. We'd also celebrate our successes and find joy in the journey, not just the destination. We made it, the first full year of living in our dried-in house. Odds, we don't hit water, and evens, we do hit water. I like odd numbers. You like odds? Yeah, okay. so odds are water. Odds are water, okay, odds are water. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Seven. Oh, we're yeah. gonna hit water, hold on. Yeah. The year started off with a bang when the well driller called and said we're on our way. We were feeling lucky and ready to gamble our hard-earned money to see if we'd hit water or not. I don't want to get too excited. I yet. know. And would you believe it? We hit over 10 gallons per minute at just 87 feet. Yeah, we're under 90 feet. That's, That's crazy. That's kind of odd, right? I mean, not really. Kind of odd? Kind of odd. Kind of odd. This area is um, a scary area. Nothing short of a miracle. Then, we officially got to enjoy the first winter in our dried-in house. We did a lot of cooking, playing with sourdough, doing load after load of laundry, completed a pantry overhaul project, planned the garden for the upcoming year, and even tested the viability of old seeds. Somehow, I think there's more sprouts here than seeds. Is that even possible? Wait for it. We even had fun in the snow. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me help you up. Help me. Let me help you up. Oh, this isn't fun. <laughs> this isn't fun. Oh, no. I don't want to be a kid. I want to be an adult. <laughs> we took a trip to McCall, Idaho for winter carnival. Something we've been wanting to do for years. And our well water? we eventually installed a purification system to have bottomless, drinkable H2O. Not too shabby. Looking Ooh. pretty good. That's more than half, that's like three quarters. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're probably three quarters full. Looks good to me. The next upgrade, a Wi-Fi cistern monitor. So actually this reading, it's not taking your reading constantly, maybe every 30 seconds or so. This meant we could now see how much water was in the cisterns from in the house. Wicked cool. With spring in full swing, it was time to make sure we were ready for gardening season. So we built three new raised beds out of scrap wood in our boneyard. We filled the beds with bark, sawdust left over from sawmilling, and brought in additional soil and compost to both fill the new beds and top off the old ones. An automatic watering system this year was a must have. We designed it on paper then got to work making it, and later our plants, come to life. Many gardeners would tell you that the secret to a good garden is good soil. With hay and manure from a neighbor, we built a new, hefty pile to cook over the summer. With compost, you always have to be thinking a year in advance, and we're really happy we got this done. We said farewell to our crusty temporary man door and in its place, installed this beautiful custom door we ordered. Love it. Ding dong. Ding dong, bugaboo wants in. Oh, 
Bugaboo, do you care about what the door? What we didn't tell them is that you installed a drawbridge off camera and Bugaboo knows how to lower it. <laughs> yep. We put a moat in also <laughs> and we filled it with cistern water. It's treated water. What do you think? I love it. One morning, we were even greeted with a crop of morels outside our bedroom window. Did we harvest them? You bet we did. Well, glad we didn't water the garden. Alyssa, <laughs> hey, we should turn the water on a little bit. I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Oh, okay. What? I, and by, by rain, I meant like a flash flood. I know. That's a lot of hail. It's for like the little there's scene. literally like hail coming off of the roof, like sheets wow. of hail. See those sheets oh of hail? Oh my gosh. Spring was coming to an end, and summer was knocking on our door. Summer equals gardening season. All right, little guys, are you ready to go to your forever home? No, we want to stay inside where it's safe. I know, seedlings. A ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. We're proud to say that all of our plants were started from seeds indoors, and we were so excited to transplant them. They were a little on the small side, but caught up eventually. It was our hope that doing extensive garden planning and seed starting over the winter would pay off big time. Jesse took on his first large project of the year and decided to design and build a man basket for our telehandler, which would allow us to safely and easily work on the exterior of the house. He busted out the sawmill to mill up the flooring with remains from the timber frame. This wasn't just a work platform, but a work of art, and we wanted to honor it as such. So what better way than to paint Old Glory on it? Let freedom ring. We turned right around and took the basket on a trip to pick an entire apricot tree that we'd later turn into gallons upon gallons of apricot salsa. Foraging for huckleberries, raspberries, organ grapes, and seemingly every other summer fruit under the sun happened. What a treat to have huckleberries in the dead of winter. We even took a little time to enjoy the stillness and quietness of nature. Meanwhile, a big storm was brewing. Gosh. Oh, did the power go out? Oh my god, there's so it's The winds have already died back down. Like they're not, not nearly as dead calm as it was just a few minutes ago, but they're much calmer now and we're getting lots of rain. Apparently there was actually a weather warning for this, which we didn't see a uh, severe thunderstorm warning and penny sized hail. I've never seen that, but I think if we get some, it might damage the car and the truck. <laughs> so hopefully we don't get any of that. Oh my gosh. Bugaboo, come on, come on, come on. Come here, Bugaboo. Come on. The engineering of our house was legitimately tested that night. For those of you that live in tornado or hurricane territory, this probably is all too familiar for you, but this is not normal here. <laughs> for now, things are calmed down. I really don't see much lightning, 
man, I feel bad for whoever's in the path of that storm because it's still going. According to the weather service, it's moving at 60 miles an hour. I think it's safe to go to bed now. It's almost midnight, long past our bedtime. Alrighty then, on to the next project of the year. We completed all the electrical work in our garage. Days of work, miles of hot knifing, and a failed electrical inspection later, we were finally able to roll up the extension cords and had usable outlets along the wall. We even installed some exterior lighting. Watch out world, Jesse and Alyssa are civilized. <laughs> so it's fun using it from the driveway and from the living room. I think we're curious, can you do it from an airplane? Skyway 5237 taking runway 20, we'll be departing to the east. I just turned them on via the app and nothing is happening. Oh no. Oh, hey! They just turned on. We got a yes. We got a yes. Thanks for the lights. Before we knew it, our first garden harvests were underway. Carrots? Yes, please. Hey, where are you going with all those carrots? Hey, get back here. Wow. <laughs> with fire season upon us, Jesse spent some time ensuring we had some sort of plan to fight fire and protect our house. You don't want to get caught with your pants down. I'm not going to call your name because you're going to whip around with the hose. Right. Jesse. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> it was basic, but better than nothing. So I think the answer to my question, can our house survive a wildfire? I would say yes, but not without some planning, not without some strategy and some preventative, you know, stuff. So hopefully we don't ever experience that. And I suppose if we ever do, we'll try to get it on camera. <laughs> on this crazy trip? Oh, I'm ready. Oh man, ready or not, here we go. We took our very first cross-country flight as a family, flying across three states to our family vacation in Mammoth Lakes, California. This was the first year since we moved to our land that we were able to vacation together with family. Being able to take this trip symbolizes everything we've worked hard towards. Once home, we pulled the mother of all woodworking tools out of our storage unit, the shopsmith. Jesse was thinking, you know what would be a quick win for us? Having functional cabinets in our kitchenette area, since we'd be using it for a long time while the permanent kitchen would be designed and built. He also wanted to practice his cabinetry skills, since we're hoping to go the DIY route on what we can in our home. He designed them in SketchUp, then got to work trying to bring them to life. Boom, boom, boom. Before we knew it, we had cabinet boxes. Yeah, thanks for the help. I I so help. I will dive into the rest of this mess and hopefully I can still figure it all out. Because yep. <laughs> we've cut a bunch of stuff off of stuff. All right, thank you. You're welcome. One by one, the cabinet drawers were assembled. upper cabinet boxes. The insides of the drawers were lacquered. Not too shabby, love. Not too shabby. Next, he drilled the pocket holes and did the final glue up on the drawers. No pressure. And the upper cabinet boxes. We bought high-end cabinet hardware and drawer slides. Soft clothes is a must in the 21st century. Bazenga. It's so amazing to design something on paper and then see it come to life right before your eyes. Finally came the time to install the custom man door in the living portion of the house. Hello, sexiness. And window, 
I sure did miss you. What do you think? I love it. With cooler weather in the forecast, it was time to seal up some gaps in our sip envelope. Today, we're gonna spend a bit of quality time with my arch nemesis, polyurethane foam. These gaps were unsealed the previous winter, but that was simply unacceptable two winters in a row. So I'm in here editing video, and all of a sudden, like, pow, like foam just starts coming out like five feet out. It's already gotten on the side of the bed and on a rocker we have next to the bed, so. While our house has been comfortable, even in extreme winter temperatures, these gaps really do add up, and the strain would be taken off the heater with things sealed. All done. With all the seedlings being in the garden and me feeling like an empty nester, I dove into the world of microgreens to see if it was something we could grow indoors year round. To my surprise, they were quite easy to grow and delicious on our morning omelets. I also started a bunch of our own extracts. We go through quite a bit over the course of a year, and to my surprise, there was a substantial cost savings to making our own. I made six different combinations of vanilla extract, as well as basil and mint extract. It's with great sadness that I share with you that our first frost is on the way, but it's not your normal average first frost. In late September, we had a record-breaking cold snap in the forecast that was sure to kill the garden followed by even more extreme winds. The pressure was on to be ready. Look how densely those are packed in there. We went into panic mode and harvested the entire garden for fear of losing it all if we didn't. It was a huge bummer because we feel like things were just getting started and our tomatoes weren't even ripe yet, but we still got a decent harvest. Dun, dun, dun. Holy cow. What'd you think? We had a dead tree just a little too close to the house. We definitely don't want it to hit the house, and I'll be doggone if all of a sudden the wind's not picking up. So we gotta get this sucker down. Oh. Nice work! The storm came and went, did kill the remainder of the garden. And while there was frost on the roof in the mornings, we attempted to seal up a hot spot. We sure hope we got it, but time will tell. Although eager to get back to working on the cabinets, we shifted focus to tidying up the property with some outside work and felling dead trees. Two trees, one cut, you betcha. Don't try this at home. Armed with an excavator, we did some rookie logging, pulled the trees out of the forest, loaded them on a trailer, and brought them home to the sawmill. We're so happy we have the skills, tools, and ability to turn logs into something a little more useful. We decided to turn these into lumber. We're thinking for our interior walls. Only, it was quite a shame that this ended up being blue pine, which is highly valuable and sought after. We know, we know, we're gonna end up in wood prison. That's okay. Suffice it to say, we generated hundreds of dollars a day in value. If freshly milled lumber doesn't make you happy, huh, I don't know what does. So that right there is a bullet. But I think that's the first bullet I've saw milled through. We 
rented a wood chipper and turned any and all waste wood on our property into beautiful wood chips we could use in the garden. Alyssa apparently says this is loud. Huh? What? Huh? just one project this was the byproduct of just one sawmilling project so it puts it in context kind of stacking these resources around and and then when it makes sense rent the chipper and I think it, you, you can actually do pretty good with it something that's been on our bucket list for years is hunting and harvesting our own meat well this may not have been the best year to do it but Jesse got a deer tag anyways followed by a deer but we were completely out of freezer space. Prematurely, we went into a canning frenzy to make room for protein. We started by canning the fruits from summer that took up the most space. Forty-seven half pints of purple Italian plum jam. Twenty-nine half pint of green gauge plum jam. We started multiple batches of mead with other frozen fruit. After all, isn't alcohol better than jam? Duh, of course it is. Huckleberry, cherry, raspberry, and apricot mead. Yum. We also hit up our local cider press with apples we harvested, and turns out we went a little overboard. We ended up with 30 gallons. Of course, we didn't have room in the freezer, so this too had to be canned. Finally, we had room for meat. Venison sausage, burger, stew meat, and roasts? Yes, please. We can't tell you how good it feels to finally be able to put meat in the freezer for the first time in our lives. Six pounds of garlic, five pounds of hot, five pounds of sweet, five pounds of chipotle, and five pounds of burger. Wow, what a detour, but back to the cabinet project. Jesse cut stock for the face frames, did some planing, some joining, and assembled the drawer fronts. were really starting to come to life. We wanted to do the painting ourselves, but it quickly became obvious that this was best to leave for the pros. While we waited on paint, we dove into another project. Oh, we're coming for you, Boneyard. We're coming for you. We set out to build our very own butcher block countertop with basically firewood. We had to beat it into submission until the pieces were smooth and uniform. Watching it come together was surreal and was exactly how we imagined it. Cut out the hole for the sink sand it down, and we were ready for epoxy. There goes nothing. Oh man. Ah, no turning back now. <laughs> Thank you. 
before the snow would arrive, we had one last outdoor project we wanted to tackle. A deck on the back of the house so we could easily heat the hot tub over the winter, as well as have a safe exit on the living level in case of an emergency. This was built entirely using reclaimed materials, which felt great. This may go without saying, but we intend for this to be temporary as we plan to build a permanent deck later. With the cabinets getting close to being ready for installation, we had to do a little bit of work to the walls, mainly insulating and drywalling. Our garage was transforming before our eyes and looking, well, less like our garage. Winter arrived and with it, the painting on our cabinets was complete. Time to get this show on the road. attached the cabinet boxes together, installed the butcher block countertop, installed the sink, shimmied the whole unit to the wall, put the drawers back in, and then completed the upper cabinet installation. Look at that. I already snuck a photo on some of You parents. did? Ooh, nice. Jesse did such a good job on the planning and execution of this entire project. I think we were both surprised, but more him than me, because I knew he could do it, and I think he had his doubts. Time for the finishing touches. Shelving, check. Under cabinet lighting, check. Above washer and dryer storage, check. End panels, check. Modern and sleek paper towel holder, definitely a check. It was time to put dishes away and do dishes that had stacked up during the temporary disconnection of the sink. If a new set of cabinets doesn't make you want to do the dishes, well, then you're crazy. What a way to end the year. This was such a great year for us. It wasn't quite what we expected, but nonetheless, we got a lot done. Getting the house dried in, we're learning, is actually a small part of building a house. At first, we thought it was the hard part, and now we're thinking that in a way, the hard work and patience begins with finishing the interior. So, what does the following year have in store for us? Possibly some pretty large projects, but stay tuned to find out. And thanks for another year of joining us and showing all of your support.